The Book of Mormon has 10 primary authors and an analysis on the diversity of language they use, specifically in this case, to refer to the Savior, to refer to Jesus Christ. The diversity they use, to me, reinforces the authenticity of the book. My son Gabe and I spent last night putting some of these things together and doing an analysis of why certain prophets and authors used specific and unique titles to them to refer to the Savior. The first one I want to look at is Lehi, recorded by his son Nephi. In the very first chapter of the Book of Mormon, Nephi records from his father, And it came to pass that when my father had read and seen many great and marvelous things, he did exclaim many things unto the Lord, such as, Great and marvelous are thy works, O Lord God Almighty. Thy throne is high in the heavens, and thy power and goodness and mercy are over all the inhabitants of the earth. And because thou art merciful, thou wilt not suffer those who come unto me to thee that they shall perish and after this manner was the language of my father in praising of his God for his soul did rejoice and his whole heart was filled because of the things which he had seen yea which the Lord had shown unto him now let's look at the language Lehi used as he referred to the Lord he referred to the Lord as the Messiah twice and the only other Prince, primary or principal author to do that was Nephi who referred to him once he referred to him as the first fruits he was the only one to do so he was the only one to refer to the Savior uh, as the great mediator which he did twice he was the only one to call him the Holy Messiah he did twice he was the only one to call him the prophet the only one to call him the true well, he called him the true Messiah twice and of all the other, all of the uh, primary authors, ten of them, Nephi is the only other one to do that, which is fitting because children often say things that uh, they learn from their parents. Nephi now has a, a, a little bit different uh, vernacular when it comes to referring to the Savior. So maybe to look at why he uses some of the specific types of appellations he does for the Lord. Let's read a passage from a vision he had that was shown by the Holy Ghost. And it reads, And it came to pass that I saw the heavens open, and an angel came down and stood before me, and he said unto me, Nephi, what beholdest thou? And I said unto him, A virgin, most beautiful and fair above all other virgins. And he said unto me, Knowest thou the condescension of God? And I said unto him, I know that he loveth his children. Nevertheless, I do not know the meaning of all things. And he said unto me, Behold, the virgin whom thou seest is the mother of the Son of God, after the manner of the flesh. And it came to pass that I beheld that she was carried away in the Spirit. And after she had been carried away in the Spirit for the space of a time, the angel spake unto me, saying, Look. And I looked and beheld the virgin again, bearing a child in her arms. And the angel said unto me, Behold the Lamb of God, yea, even the Son of the Eternal Father. Now after that remarkable vision, which I've just shared a segment of, here are some of the specific and unique titles or names that the Lord, that, that Nephi ascribes to or refers to uh, the Lord. First, the Son of the Eternal Father, twice. Son of the Everlasting Father, once. Very fitting for the, uh, that great vision that he had and the subject of that vision. He refers to him as the Son of the Most High God, the Son of Righteousness, one time. And, and no other authors in the Book of Mormon of the ten major authors refer, use these titles. Only Nephi. He refers to him as the Christ, the Beloved Son. He refers to him as the Lamb 29 times, and the other nine authors refer use the phrase Lamb to refer to the Savior three times. Quite significant. Quite, uh, if you were just looking at the statistical likelihood randomly, that uh, would be almost impossible. He refers to him as the Lamb of God 31 times, and all others four times. So you can see Nephi has a specific fingerprint and, and language he likes to use, which clearly is based upon the experiences he had growing up, being raised by his father. And then, of course, this great vision that he had is, is one thing I think we can attribute a lot of those titles to. Now, Jacob. Jacob is Nephi's brother. And this is uh, a part of a sermon from Jacob that I think 
uh, is owing to to some of the titles that he used, or at least gives explanations for titles that he uses then. So Jacob says, Wherefore we search the prophets, and we have many revelations and the spirit of prophecy. And having all these witnesses, we obtain a hope, and our faith becometh unshaken, insomuch that we truly can command in the name of Jesus, and the very trees obey us, or the mountains, or the waves of the sea. Nevertheless, the Lord God showeth us our weakness, that we may know that it is by his grace, and his great condescensions unto the children of men that we have power to do these things. So he's talking about creations and being able to, to command these elements. Well, Jacob calls the Savior the all-powerful creator, the only one to use that title. He calls him the maker twice. No one else does. He calls him the mighty God, the great creator three times. Nobody else does. He calls him the Holy One of Israel 17 times. Lehi uses that twice. Nephi uses it 14 times. And no one else uses it as at, all, at all. Now this to me is interesting because Israel is his namesake in, in a real sense. Because Israel, of course, is uh, the name that was changed from Jacob. I could see why he would use that phrase more than any other primary author uh, principal author in the Book of Mormon, he uses the phrase Lord God. Lehi uses it eight times. Nephi uses it 38 times. So Father, Son, and Son use this phrase far more than all others combined. Well, you'll see in, in households that some families use a phrase far more often than others because they come accustomed to that. That's how they were raised. So Lehi uh, obviously used the phrase Lord God, and that's most likely where Jacob learned it, where Nephi learned it. And Nephi used it even more than Jacob did. Similarly here, the Messiah, used twice by Jacob, used 13 times by Lehi, 12 times by Nephi, and all the other authors, the other seven, only use it once combined. So clearly this house that they were in, in this tent, they used that phrase and they liked that phrase. Similarly, the Redeemer, Jacob calls him the Redeemer three times, Lehi five times uses that phrase, Nephi 12 times, all of the others six times. You see, you get the idea again, uh, same thing, this household is using it far more than people are using it hundreds of years later that are still authors in the book. Lord of Hosts used seven times, his brother Nephi uses it nine times. Those others far removed, hundreds of years later, the whole combination of, of hundreds of years, use it three times combined. King Benjamin, uh, this, is, this is really wonderful, because King Benjamin, obviously uh, specifically known for being a great king. And he, you think about a king having power, he referred to the, to, to the Savior as the Lord Omnipotent. Did that four times. No one else uses that phrase. The Lord God omnipotent twice, and no one else uses that phrase. And this is really the best. He, he, he uses the phrase heavenly king, and no one else uses that phrase. Very fitting that a prophet king would refer in a sermon to the Lord, to Jesus Christ, as the heavenly king. Well, it was, it was King Benjamin who, who taught in a sermon, believe in God, believe that he is, and that he created all things, both in heaven and in earth. Believe that he has all wisdom and all power, both in heaven and in earth. Believe that man doth not comprehend all the things which the Lord can comprehend. So uh, very aligned with his titles of omnipotent, Lord omnipotent. Alma, Alma was a lost, lost sheep. He got away. He was, uh, he was very rebellious. He was, uh, refers to himself as a vile sinner. Well, he knows a good shepherd. His father uh, said a prayer that basically helped to convert him, to bring an angel to convert him. He's, he calls Jesus Christ the shepherd or the good shepherd 11 times, and all the other author, authors only refer to that, uh, use the, the word shepherd or good shepherd four times. He uses the phrase son or son of God or only begotten son 25 times, which is still more than twice all of the others combined. And just to put this into perspective, one of the sermons that Almo is giving to the uh, members of the church, he said, O ye workers of iniquity, iniquity, ye that are puffed up 
and in the vain things of the world, ye that have professed to have known the ways of righteousness, nevertheless have gone astray, as sheep having no shepherd, notwithstanding a shepherd hath called after you, and is still calling after you. Behold, I say unto you, that the good shepherd doth call you, yea, and in his own name he doth call you, which is the name of Christ. And if ye will not hearken unto the voice of the good shepherd, to the name by which ye are called, behold, ye are not the sheep of the good shepherd. And now if ye are not the sheep of the good shepherd, of what fold are ye? Behold, I say unto you, that the devil is your shepherd, and ye are of his fold. And now who can deny this? Behold, I say unto you, whosoever denieth this is a liar and a child of the devil. So we have an idea of why he uses a good shepherd. Okay, the next, let's talk about Mormon and his son Moroni. Mormon abridged the Book of Mormon. Uh, so Mormon has a vision, Behold, I speak unto you as if you were present, and yet ye are not. But behold, Jesus Christ hath shown you unto me, and I know your doing. And I know that ye do walk in the pride of your hearts, and there are none, save a few only, who do not lift themselves up in the pride of their hearts. So Mormon and Moroni, similar to Lehi, Nephi, and Jacob, have learned in their household some favorite words. First, is more than all the others combined, they just simply use the name Jesus and the name and title, I should say, Jesus Christ. In fact, they use c collectively uh, the name Jesus Christ 24 times, and all others combined, all those other, the other eight authors combined, 12 times. The only two writers to use the title, the very Christ, are Mormon and Nephi. And then the Lord Jesus, the only one, again, similar to Jesus, just um, uh, slightly different, but uh, Moroni also is the only one to use the phrase holy being and holy child. Well, I think it's fitting when, when, uh, when he has a vision where he says that Jesus Christ has shown you unto me. Uh, it's not terribly surprising that he would use Jesus or Jesus Christ more often than the others and the very God. So we see that there are specific styles, just like a fingerprint, that uh, authors have, titles that li they like to use and that they use based upon their upbringing, based upon what they learned in their family, based upon experiences or visions that they had as prophets, and they write according to their knowledge and their experience. And thus you can see clearly uh, this is authentic. This is a divine authorship uh, coming through prophets who told their story uh, based upon the, uh, you know, the testimony they had of the Savior.